We're at a house local to us to determine what technologies would be suitable for this customer to remove themselves from fossil fuels. They currently have a gas boiler, but no solar, and they want a battery as well. So one of the first things you have to consider before deciding that you might want a heat pump is how much space you've got in the property. You have lots of components to consider over and above what a boiler will have. For example, in this case, this is a system boiler in the case that we've got a tank up the stairs, but a boiler in a cupboard downstairs. You've also got on this boiler some pipe work, which isn't quite suitable for a heat pump. The typical heat pump pipe work needed to take energy from the outside unit to your radiators or the hot water cylinder needs to be around 28 millimeters. And most houses from their boilers will be around 22 millimeters, which is what it is in this case. What we have to do is measure how much space we're going to need for all the components and where they're going to go. Your installer, when they come out, they should be able to talk you through where this will be and how best to utilize your house for the components. One of the key things to consider before thinking about getting a heat pump is what insulation you've got and what windows you've got. And of course, the radiators you've got to output the heat you need to heat the room. Windows are also a key factor to consider. Modern double glazing like UPVC or even modern wood is really important to keep that heat in and stop it going out. If you have a lot of windows in a home, you'll find that the heat loss of a building will be higher. One of the common things that you'll find about heat pumps is people discussing what heat loss is. So heat loss essentially means, in our case, what the difference temperature is between one point to another. And in our case, it's generally speaking between one area as an inside to outside. The greater that temperature difference is, the greater the heat loss. In the case of a system boiler, as in when a boiler has a hot water cylinder already attached, like this one, you need to consider a couple of things. And the major one is the hot water cylinder will generally almost always be replaced. The reason for this is because the coil that takes the heat from the boiler and transfers it into the water that goes to your hot taps will be too small for a heat pump. These coils typically require a much higher flow temperature from a boiler than a heat pump will be able to cater for. What this means is that the reheat times will be slower and it might not actually work that efficiently. So these two pipes, this is the flow and the return. And this pipe here carries the energy or the heat from the boiler, and passes it through the coil out into the water that goes to your hot taps. Once it's done that, it then comes back out here to the boiler to be reheated again, and the cycle continues. You can see from here that the heights of the coils are very similar, the inlet and the outlet. What this means is that the coil may not be very big in diameter, they also may not be very big in circumference either in terms of the actual length of it up the cylinder. What this means is that the coil will not output as much energy as it needs to and when you put a heat pump onto this, it won't work correctly. So one of the main considerations for when choosing where to put a heat pump is the outside unit. It's the one component that has to be on every system and you have to have it outside and having it outside brings with its challenges such as where to put it in terms of the windows, soak away because it does drain condensate and getting the pipe work to and from it. This house in particular has a concrete floor downstairs so we can't take any pipe work through the walls or under the floor so everything has to come from above. So when you're having a boiler behind a wall like this you have to consider how you're going to put things in and how you're going to get around it. Once you've chosen the outside location you also need to consider neighbouring buildings, neighbours houses, and other surrounding areas are going to be close to the noise of the air source heat pump. They're not loud, but they do have an air that comes off the front of them, which can create a background noise. So you need to make sure you conform to the local regulations and the regulations given to us by MCS in order to make sure that your neighbors are happy and we don't break any boundaries. This is the location we eventually settled on because of a number of reasons. As you can see, the pipe work goes all the way up to the attic of this house. And the reason why this area was quite a bit easier is because this is on the gable end of the house. So you can come straight out the wall and bring the pipe work directly down. This area is also tucked away, so you won't get any wind affecting it. 
What's also more is that this whole patio falls back the way to the house. So this unit does drain condensate. So when it drains, it will flow back to the house. And behind the house, there's a soakway built into the whole house around the whole thing. So that any water that falls onto the patio can be drained away. These do condensate quite a lot of water in high humidity. So if the patio was to be falling away from the heat pump, this whole area during winter time might freeze and cause a risk of falling. So there's lots of different types of heat pumps to choose from and ultimately it comes down to the heat loss of the building, but there's also other things such as space within the house and noise levels you have to consider. This type of heat pump is called a monoblock, which basically means that everything is outside apart from a hot water tank, a buffer vessel or a volumizer, and this system's got a backup heater as well. So if this was to fail, the heating does still operate. There are other types of units as well. You can get split systems and you can get hydro split systems, which are different models available from Daikin and other manufacturers. The main benefit for the monoblock though is that all the water pipe work comes outside. So you don't need a refrigeration engineer or someone that has F-gas to fit the refrigerant pipes between the outside unit and what would be the inside unit. So the water pipes come down here from the inside and they get heated directly out of here. So there's no heat transfer done inside the house apart from to the radiators and to the coil where it transfers to the water inside the tank. So as part of your heat pump install, it's probably likely you'll have to change your hot water tank to one that has a larger coil. So most tanks are designed for boilers, whereas this tank is designed predominantly for a heat pump. It has a very large coil within it. It's actually six square meters, which is very, very large for a, a water tank. It's designed by a company called Newark with HeatGeek. HeatGeek are a household name and they offer training courses for installers to upskill through low carbon technologies. So this cylinder is the 300 litre version from Newark. So when you're considering a hot water tank, one of the main things you have to look at is of course the space. This space we had to work with was very, very tight. We only just managed to get it in to be honest with you. But ultimately we're trying to have a really efficient system here. So this coil runs on 35 mil, it is oversized. Everything's oversized slightly, but we want to get the flow rate and make sure that we can get the heat transfer correctly. The, the size of the heat pump is only six kilowatts but ultimately we're trying to get as much energy into it as possible. And if that, that means we've oversized this slightly, then that's okay. You can undersize it, but you don't really want to do that to avoid the short cycling of the heat pump and making sure you can get the heat transfer to the coil correct. So with every heat pump, you'll get a display. This tank actually comes with a handy display holder. So this just mounts to the back of it. And this is the main control interface for the heat pump itself. So you have various different parameters and screen information on here but everything's on an app nowadays. So although you can interact with it here and down at the thermostat in the living room, everything's on the app that you need to control. This is only really used if your installer is needing to change something. But to be honest with you, once your heat pump's set up, you'll find that everything is kind of operating as it should. And you only really need to interact with this with deep setting changes, which very seldom do you have to do. So with every heat pump installed, you should generally have a main thermostat that controls the whole heating system, ideally as well, one zone. Because the whole house is now designed as one, you shouldn't have to have different zones inside a house unless specifically required, maybe for underwater heating and radiators, but generally speaking, it's all one zone. Because this is the main thermostat of the house, the location of it is really important so that it doesn't get influenced by heat or cold. So it doesn't think it's too hot or too cold and reads the room temperature accurately for the whole building. If this is too high, the radiators won't come on in different parts of the room. So calibrating this and having it in the correct location is really important. The next thing to consider is that the thermostat is designed for the product that's installed. So installing a hive or similar on a heat pump is not ideal because they aren't designed to work together. This is the Daikin Madoka, which is the thermostat, which is designed for all the Daikin air to water heat pumps. And it works really well with it. If you are using a third party control, which is essentially a different product other than the one that's installed, you may have to find workarounds to get it to work, or you may find that it's on and off ratio is a bit too high. So you might have the heat pump coming on and off a bit too much or a bit too little. The most important part of any heat pump is ensuring that the controls and the product that are installed all work easily and simply together. Having a system that's overly complicated or has too many control methods will confuse the system and may affect your efficiency overall.
benefit of also having a monoblock heat pump. If you have a split system, you have to have an indoor unit as well. So in this case, the owners have turned this into a storage area for various things. And this is the benefit of also moving a boiler, especially from a kitchen cupboard, is the fact you can repurpose the space it was in previously. So to summarize, there's a few key things you have to consider before getting a heat pump installed. First, speak with a reputable installer. There's lots of information available online and one of the key things you should be looking for is that they're MCS and covered by a consumer code such as the RECC. The one thing you should absolutely receive is a heat loss document which issues the kilowatt load on your house and then referencing the heat pump that's been chosen because of that. The next thing is your radiator sizing, what radiators have been changed. The main thing though is the flow temperature. Lower is always better with a heat pump. If you can have it running at 40 or 45, absolutely brilliant. If you have to run it at 55 or any higher, you should be asking questions. 55 degrees is really worst case scenario. You should be designing for lower than that. And any installer that's reputable should be aiming to have it lower for you, especially if you're coming from natural gas and trying to make energy saving cuts. The next thing you can do is educate yourself. There's loads of information online, forums, blogs, even on our website as well, there's loads of information there to help educate yourself so you can ask the right questions when your installer comes around. The third thing you should really consider is where can a heat pump go outside? If you don't have any space outside, that's the first problem you're going to come to. They can't really be put above floor level at high level because most manufacturers won't cover them under a warranty if they have to be accessed via a ladder or if there's a safety risk to the engineer. Thanks so much for watching our video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and if you have any questions leave them in the comments below. We'll see you next time. Thank you.